In boxing, it's Jake LaMotta. At the middleweight division, it's Jake LaMotta. One of the most celebrated middleweight champions of the post-World War II era, Jake LaMotta remains one of the most popular figures in New York history. LaMotta's heyday coincided with the advent of boxing as a major television attraction, and he became nationally known even before his victory with a 10th round knockout over Marcel Serdan, which won for him the middleweight crown in Detroit on June 16, 1949. During his colorful career, LaMotta fought 37 fights in New York, winning all but four of them. He also fought another 11 bouts in the metropolitan area, including five in White Plains, three in Brooklyn, two in Long Island City, and another one in Woodhaven. His rough, aggressive style earned him a loyal and enthusiastic following amongst New Yorkers. LaMotta collected 30 knockouts among his 83 career pro wins and was only knocked out four times. Unfortunately, one of those KOs came February 14, 1951 in Chicago, the hands of Sugar Ray Robinson and cost LaMotta his title. Although undisputed middleweight champion for slightly less than two years, LaMotta's name and fame were insured by his nickname, The Raging Bull, which became the title of a major motion picture about his boxing career. His professional career encompassed 106 bouts, of which he won 83, 53 by decision, and lost 19, 15 of those by decision. LaMotta had not fought a draw when he retired, nor did he ever want to. He always fought to win all out, and usually did. Our boxing award and our third annual induction dinner for the New York Sports Museum and Hall of Fame goes to Jake LaMotta. Yes. That's a nice looking thing there, oh geez. Just in case I sneeze. <laughs> Good evening. I'm very, very happy to be here tonight for this wonderful, terrific affair. In New York Hall of Fame, is better than the Chicago Hall of Fame, or Philadelphia Hall of Fame, or California Hall of Fame. And New York, you know, really good. Really good. You know I, 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 I've been a mean, tough, vicious, and cruel person. Then I retired from the ring, and I wanted to show business. Now my greatest pleasure is making people laugh. And if you don't laugh, I did not come here to discuss the theory of relativity. <laughs> no, will I try to bore you with a lecture on nuclear physicists. I said, I'll bore you my own way. I'll leave all the other stuff to the science. Scientists, you know, like the Oppenheimers and the Grazianos. But instead, I'd like to talk to you about a subject I'm more familiar with. Art. Not the kind of art you see in museums or on calendars. I mean, the art of defending yourself. In these days of juvenile delinquencies and muggers, we must learn how to defend ourselves. And in order to defend yourself properly, two things are important. A good lawyer and a good alibi. <laughs> and the guy that wrote this stuff, we better have both. We're all kidding yourself. When I got up this morning, I looked in the mirror, and I realized there's too much violence in the world today most of which has been perpetrated upon me <laughs> by such an illustrious gentleman as Sugar Ray Robinson, Sugar Ray Robinson, and Sugar Ray Robinson. As a matter of fact, I fought sugar so many times, it's a wonder I don't have diabetes. <laughs> I remember one night he broke my rib, then he, then he broke my jaw, but luckily, as you can see, he never touched my nose. <laughs> After the fight, Sugar Ray looked into my eyes, he said, Jake, black is beautiful. 
But thank goodness the violence in my life is just a memory, a figment of my sordid past. Right now, I'm happy to say I finally made it big. My life story is now on film, and as you know, it's called Raging Bull. It was nominated for eight Academy Awards, and it earned superstar Robert De Niro a well-deserved Oscar for Best Acting. Also, i like to mention that The Raging Bull was voted the, the best movie of the 80s, and it's now in the Smithsonian Institute. How about that? I told the producers I like to play myself in a movie set to be jakey, not the type. <laughs> so they were thinking of using Sammy Davis Jr. instead, but he couldn't do it either because he was too Jewish. Anyhow, happy, happy to say that my movie will be rated GP so you can bring the whole family. They're cutting out of my entire sex life. But that's okay, you won't miss those 30 seconds anyway. <laughs> anyway, it's a thrill to be standing here talking to you wonderful people. In fact, it's a thrill to be standing. I haven't seen so many people since my last fight in Madison Square Garden. After that fight, a reporter said to me, Jake, where do you go from here? I said, to a hospital. <laughs> but I'm in great shape. Every artery of my body is hard as a rock. <laughs> you know, I come from a very tough neighborhood. My neighborhood, you have to be a fighter just to survive. It's a lucky thing I can handle myself. It's the other guys I couldn't handle. But like I said before, I'm in great shape. Last night, a guy got tough for me. I gave him one shot, paralyzed. My whole side. <laughs> you know, I still remember my first fight in the amateurs, and that was a long time ago. I remember that night like it was just recently. I had a great body, and I was proud of my body. And when I entered the ring, I took off my robe, and I'm prancing around the ring, showing off my body to everyone. Everybody was yelling and screaming. Women were fainting. I forgot to put my trunks on. <laughs> Then, then I threw a left, a right, another left, another left, another right, a left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, Then my opponent came into the ring. <laughs> he was a different type of fighter, he was good. Right away he started to feel me. When I saw this, I outsmarted him and I started to feel him. Then I started to enjoy it. I said to myself, what are we fighting about? <laughs> this is better than fighting. The first round, I decided to lay low. Then he gave me a shot in the mouth. Now I was laying a little lower than I expected. But, but one thing about me, I kept my head. I lost my teeth, but I kept my head. This guy opened everything that was closed and closed everything that was open. <laughs> then I decided to dazzle him with my footwork. <laughs> Meanwhile, he was blinding me with his punches. Well, I figured this wasn't working either. So I decided to circle him. Then he circled me. Then I circled him. And then he got mad because I was making bigger circles than him. At that time, I wasn't much of a fighter when I traveled in the bigger circles. All of a sudden, he gives me a shot right on top of the head. I said to myself, what's this? In the middle of a circle, this was my best circle. Then I threw a right hand and punched myself right in the mouth. Now, I really got mad. And I came with this guy with vengeance, but he came back with punches. Now I got still madder, and I started to throw my famous one five, one five, two, three, and four, I got it. Can't get a close. Then I came out like a caveman. He gave me one shot, and I caved in. Now I might go down to the fight, but I got news for you. Once I go down, I stay there. I don't get up. I figure I'm here. Where am I going? I'm not busy. I'll stay here a while. But if I get up, it'll only hit me again, and I'll go down again. What do I have to do? Make three trips to the same place? As long as I'm laying here, I'll hang around. While I was laying there, I noticed another thing. He wasn't hitting me. I figured I should have been lying down, that I would have had this problem. All of a sudden, the referee comes over and starts pushing him away. I said, what are you pushing him away now for, you bum? Where were you when I needed you? <laughs> then he started counting. I said, what are you counting for? Call a doctor. And that ended my amateur 
amateur career. At this point, I'd like to leave you with a wonderful, wonderful, beautiful thought. Don't ever get discouraged. When things look black, send them to the laundry. Thank you and God bless you. How about some more from Jake? <laughs> oh, you got that. Oh, that that's, hey, those are great. Those are great pitches. Can you focus on this one right here? Yeah. That right that's there. when he won the championship with Joe Lewis was there? Yeah, yeah. You oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's right. before your time. Before my time, Jake. What year was that? 1949. Well, I was nine years old back then, Jake, and I had a chance to watch you probably yeah. fight on uh, Jimmy Powers, Calvacate of Sports, Gillette Blue Blades, right, right. and Pabst Blue Ribbon. We were watching boxing at that age. We were. I, I, yeah. We had one of the first television sets on Bryant Avenue in the East Bronx. Oh, you were rich. And we yeah. saw, you we were rich. rich. We had a Freed Eisman was the name. And uh, I got to watch Joe Lewis against Ezra Charles when Lewis was on his oh, way out yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was it. Ezra Charles was a great, great champion, great champion, you know that? He never got the credit that uh, was coming to him, but he was a, he was some fighter. Where'd you grow up in the Bronx? All over, all over the Bronx. Pelham Parkway too, I'll bet. That was my last home was on Pelham Parkway, but I lived all over the Bronx. Jake, you fought Sugar Ray exactly six times, twice right. in the Garden. Twice in Detroit and twice in Chicago. Which was your toughest fight? That was Robinson. Everyone, huh? No, no, they weren't. They, they were, weren't. They weren't my toughest fights. Who I was your toughest I, opponent? I had, I had a lot of tough fights. Robinson is the greatest fighter pop for pound that I've ever lived. That's not only my opinion, but the opinion of most experts. The greatest fighter. But I never had any problem with him because he was always running. He was running for me. I was chasing him all the time. It was, it, when he when he fought me, he did row work. He did five miles of row row work backwards. In, in the in the gym. No, or are you fighting no, in the ring? No, no, no. That's how he trains for me, by doing row work backwards. Backwards. Yeah. He always ran for me. But uh, I got to give him credit. Great, great, great champion. I fought him twice in three weeks. Can I imagine? Your, your son, Jake Jr., told me a story that you were a little kid, around eight years old. Uh, the guys in Neighborhood would gather around and put you in a circle with some other eight-year-old. Yeah, and he used a, to lot of kids, a lot of kids. He used to slug it out and he used to throw pennies, pennies at you. Pennies the rent was, what, $15 a month? And here's an eight-year-old kid right. who was able to make rent money by boxing out with the eight-year-olds right. for pennies. Well, I learned, that's how I learned. I, mean, we, you know, I would go maybe four or five fights a day. But those weren't like round, round things. You know, you'd just go for like yes, a minute. Whoever stood up uh, the yeah, longest. Yeah. And then, then they would throw, but, uh, the gloves weren't tied on. But soon they throw money on the thing, take off the gloves and pick up the pennies and nickels. And I would end up with three, four dollars a, a day like that. Three or four dollars a day, but it ended, it ended up like at the end of the week, I make about ten, fifteen dollars. Let me ask you, a great honor for you tonight here at the uh, Sports Museum? Oh, sure. Uh, no, it's always a great honor when something like this happens in New York City. I mean, they got these, these, these things all over. Chicago, Philadelphia. But this is your hometown. Yeah, but when you get recognized in New York, that, that means something. That means good. New York is the place. Jake, uh, okay. you make a lot of appearances around the area and signing autographs? No, I, 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 I do these card shows. Uh -huh. And then I do stand-up comedy. Well, you I, did a great job yeah. tonight. I think you yeah. stole Jackie Mason's material. <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody's material. <laughs> Jake, again, congratulations and good luck. Thank you.